Welcome back. Okay, so we've been talking about data-driven regression uh, to obtain models for, for model predictive control. So we're doing system identification based on data. We're finding best fit models that fit the data using regression, and we're going to use that for control. Uh, we've talked about DMD with control, Koopman with control. Now I want to tell you about the sparse identification of nonlinear dynamics with control. So this is essentially a framework to get fully nonlinear models, x dot equals f of x comma u, fully nonlinear models purely from data that you can then use in this model predictive control optimization. Okay, so. Uh, I'm just going to give you a very, very quick overview of the original Cindy method. Um, the basic idea here is if I have some measurement data of my system, let's say this is the Lorentz system, that should not be a box. Um, that should be, I think, a row. That should be a row. Anyway, if I have some measurement data of some nonlinear dynamical system, what I can do is I can form this data into these tall columns that evolve in time. So my three state variables, x, y, and z in time, and x dot, y dot, and z dot. And what Cindy does is it essentially builds this nonlinear uh, library, theta of x, of all of the candidate functions that could be in these right-hand side dynamics. So these can be evaluated with data. And then it uses sparse regression to find uh, the fewest columns in this library that give you x dot the fewest columns that give you y dot, and the fewest columns that give you z dot using sparse regression. Uh, and then what you end up recovering is a dynamical system that agrees with your original system, and it identifies the correct nonlinear structure. Okay, so this is a pretty cool method of nonlinear system identification purely from data. Um, it's formulated as a linear regression problem. So we essentially build all of the nonlinearity into this theta matrix, and then we do sparsity regularized linear regression to find the fewest columns that agree with x dot, y dot, and z dot. Okay? So this is really just a big ax equals b solve uh, once we've built this library. Now, a couple things of interest. You can definitely do this in discrete time too. This doesn't have to be x dot, y dot, z dot. This could be x, y, and z at time step k plus 1 as some nonlinear function of those variables at time step k. So you can do this in discrete time. Now, what I'm going to tell you about is how you can use uh, this Cindy algorithm, this sparse identification of nonlinear dynamics, to not only identify unforced dynamical systems, but now to uh, identify systems with actuation and control. So if you want to know more about this, I'll point you to a video in the comments where you can learn all about Cindy. But now we're going to apply this uh, to Cindy with control. OK, so this is a modified version of Cindy, where now instead of just building a library of functions of x, like x, x squared, x cubed, and so on, now what we're going to do is allow our library to include cross terms that include the actuation u. So my library includes x, u, x squared, x, u, and so on and so forth. This library is only limited by, by your imagination. So this, can, this doesn't have to include polynomials. It can have cosines and sines, tangents, Bessel functions, whatever you want. Um, but the idea with Cindy with control is we're going to apply that same sparse regression procedure to find the best fit x dot, uh, the fewest columns of this matrix that agree with the time derivative of my measurement vector x. Okay, And so essentially, I build this library from data um, I'm going to illustrate this on a pretty simple system. So this is the classic predator-prey Latka Volterra, um, where you essentially get these oscillations in predator and prey uh, populations, these kind of uh, phase-lagged oscillations. So you know, bunnies grow, and then wolves grow to catch up. The wolves eat all the bunnies, so their population collapses. Then the wolves have no food, so they die off. Then the bunnies grow, and so on and so forth. So this evolves in time. OK, so what we're essentially doing, original Cindy could identify the Locke of Volterra dynamics with no problem. Just from this data, Cindy could identify those nonlinear dynamics. But now let's say that I have some actuation and control that I'm actively modifying the system with some feedback control. So for example, um, in the case of, of population dynamics, maybe I'm actively going and hunting wolves. And this actually happened back um, in the, uh, I think this was the Appalachia um, trapping records. They would, there were records of lynx and hare. 
So you had a predator and a prey, but they were actively trapping these animals for their pelts, and so there was this active feedback control modifying the dynamics of the system. Okay? So that's kind of the, the test case here. So let's say we actually can measure some actuation U that's modifying these dynamics and see if we can learn those, uh, the nonlinear dynamics and the effect of actuation. In this case, um, I just write down the equations with some control input. I simulate them to generate my data. And the idea here is from time uh, 0 to 100, I have one control strategy. Maybe here I'm you know, aggressively trapping wolves. Okay, So that's one, one control strategy. And then at time step 100, my control strategy changes. So my u, that input vector u, changes at time step 100. Okay, so kind of 0 to 100 is my training data. 100 to 200 is my validation data. And what you can essentially see is if I do naive Cindy, if I do regular Cindy, but I don't take into account the fact that I'm actively controlling my system, then I can agree quite well in my training period. But then when I switch my control input, my Cindy model starts to diverge because it fundamentally doesn't capture the fact that there's this control variable u that's forcing my system. Whereas my Cindy with control model knows that there's this u that's affecting my system. And as long as I measure what that u is, I can accurately trace different control strategies in the future. Okay, so the blue agrees well with my validation. Okay, so that's kind of the, the high level view of Cindy with control is basically um, you build this, this augmented library that has not just your state dynamics, but also takes into account the actuation so that when you measure your dynamics and train the model, it disambiguates the internal nonlinear dynamics from the effect of actuation and control so that if I change my control strategy at some point, my Cindy with control model is able to compensate, whereas a naive Cindy model would fail. Okay? And here's a nice uh, diagram that Ulrike Kaiser made in this archive paper for the Lorentz system. So this is basically that big Cindy, uh, Cindy picture, but now with control. So here we have our, our uh, Lorentz dynamics with some actuation u in the first state x. So now I have my data collection x, y, and z and u. And now I do this sparse regression in this augmented library that includes uh, nonlinear functions of my states and control. And what you find is you can simultaneously identify the unforced dynamics and the effective actuation. OK, so Cindy with control is a powerful data-driven regression technique that allows you to identify input-output models that are nonlinear. OK, so some nonlinear dynamical system and the possibly nonlinear effective actuation. OK, so what we can then do is take those Cindy with control models and wrap a model predictive controller around it and see if we can stabilize or modify the behavior of a strongly nonlinear system. OK, that's all coming up. Thank you.